Hello and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Cara Lathwaite and here are today's top stories. Council and Union battles in Southampton. Not marking students' work the threats made by over half the country's lecturers. Winchester City Council goes into the red. But the revenue forecasts were those put forward by the Liberal Democrats and it's those forecasts that have failed. And in sport, could the underdogs Hartley pull off a shock in the Hampshire Senior Cup? Crisis talks are underway today between unions and Southampton City Council in a desperate attempt to stop more strike action. The city has been disrupted by 12 weeks of rolling strikes over enforced pay cuts for council staff. Julie Corje has the latest on the ongoing dispute. More than a thousand council workers walked out on the streets of Southampton last week to protest against pay cuts imposed by Southampton City Council. After several meetings with the council over the summer, the unions are still unhappy with the imposed plan. The pay cuts our members have had to suffer have been quite substantial, up to 15% of their normal take-home pay. We also believe the council can save money in different ways. There's no other council in this region has cut council workers' pay. Portsmouth, the Isle of Wight, Hampshire have all been able to manage uh, reducing uh, their expenditure without cutting wages. We think Southampton should do the same. They talk about negotiation, there isn't any negotiation. Just get on with it, that's what they want us to do. We, we're going to carry on, we're not here for the short term, we're here for the long term. Yeah? We want to get better not just for ourselves, but better for everybody else. We're giving a, a very good service, excellent service, and we want to be remunerated as such, really. Council workers have had to take pay cuts of up to 5.5% for the higher earners. But Southampton City Council insists that this pay cut will protect 400 jobs and save £75 million pounds over four years. Do, do you think that the unions are being unreasonable? Totally unreasonable, yes, because Southampton was the first council to say that we'd look at this way of working. Um, the union has, has decided to pick on Southampton and its residents and put them through a lot of misery. We don't want to go down the route of losing people that are delivering key services to the residents, but if things do go on, then we will have to take um, we will have to take some action because the public are saying um, enough's enough. They want their bins collected. They want their services that they pay for their taxes. Unions and the city council are meeting today to try to reach an agreement and put an end to the ongoing strikes. If a compromise is not reached today, Southampton residents will have to continue to put up with the consequences of the dispute. Judy Cordier for Winchester News Online. Local students could face not graduating on time if lecturers carry out threats not to mark their work. Academics from 67 universities, including Winchester, say that if changes to their pensions go ahead, they will be forced to take such action in strikes that could affect over a million UK students. Tom Morgan has the story. University lecturers across the country are set to take industrial action this week following changes to their pension schemes that they feel will leave them with less money after they retire. The lecturers are set to begin stage one of their campaign, which will consist of them working only their contracted hours. Further stages of the campaign will include rolling strikes. Academics have also threatened to boycott the marking of students' work if university employers are unwilling to cooperate. It's something that we don't like to have to do. Uh, ideally, you know, we were supposed to have a consultation on these issues around the pension scheme. 90% um, of respondents to the scheme disagreed with the changes, but they went ahead anyway. Uh, so in a sense, they've left us without many other options to try and bring the employers back to the table. And that's why we decided to have this, uh, this action. Student unions affected by the dispute are keen to voice their views. So the situation's kind of come to a head. It's not being really dealt with. So they're striking and they're taking action to try and resolve these issues. Um, which will, of course, have real big connotations on, student, on the student body uh, because of lect reduced lecture hours, reduced contact time. So from a student union perspective, this needs to be resolved very quickly. Only time will tell if the situation can be resolved with minimal disruption to the universities. This is Tom Morgan reporting for Winchester News Online. An unexpected budget deficit of almost £1 million in Winchester has led to a row amongst councillors over who is to blame. Lewis O'Brien reports on what this means for public services. Local public services and charities in Winchester could be at risk. This is after it was announced the City Council would have to cut its budget deficit. 
The deficit, which stands at £825,000, was announced at a committee meeting on the 28th of September at Winchester Guildhall. One local organisation potentially at risk is the Winchester Church Night Shelter, which has already had its budget cut twice in the last three years. Our budget or our finances are normally we're funded by donations from volunteers and from voluntary sources. So Winchester City Council itself doesn't actually fund us a huge amount. Uh, so we are as pared down as we can. We have very limited staff and operation and we're backed up by a huge team of volunteers. The Conservative administration changed the budget after gaining control of the council from the Liberal Democrats at the local elections in May. The council leader feels these changes were for the best. Absolutely. The changes we made regarding Sunday parking were balanced by the savings we made by the unwanted glass collection service. And it was a balanced budget. We changed the figures within it. But the revenue forecasts were those put forward by the Liberal Democrats. And it's those forecasts that have failed and we're correcting that now. However, these claims have been rejected by the Liberal Democrats who feel it's the Conservative administration who have taken too long in reducing costs and that cuts in public services are inevitable. The argument between who is to blame for the budget deficit wages on. However, it is not clear how bad public services and the people that use these services will be affected. Lewis O'Brien, Winchester News Online. Well, for the full statement and more on that story, make sure you visit our website at www.winnell.co.uk. Unemployment in the UK has hit an all-time high, it was announced today, with an estimated 2.5 million now out of work. The figures show that the number of young people unemployed is close to 1 million, the highest since records began in the early 1990s. Saving £2 million a year is the aim of Winchester City Council after agreeing to a new contract over bin collection. Calendars have been distributed to homes of residents, informing them of the new collection days. The change will come into effect on the 17th of October. And Winchester students made it into the local paper today with their efforts to keep the city tidy and do their bit by walking around the local area and picking up rubbish. And I heard Basingstoke also did their bit in the Hampshire Senior Cup last night, Jake. Well, there were five goals at the Camrose, Cara, but which way did they go? Gareth Messenger was at the game. Looking at Basingstoke's league form, you would have expected this tie against Hartley Wintney to be a simple task. And after David Pratt's opener after just eight minutes, the home side was surely going to record an easy victory. But Basingstoke clearly hadn't read the script when Hartley hit back against the run of play. Josh Daniels found himself behind the defence and with enough time to slot past keeper Che Morris. And just before the break, the away side took a surprising lead. Basingstoke's leaky defence left winger Jack Smiley unmarked and free to score their second. Frank Gray surely had some strong words at half-time and the home side came out firing. A debatable penalty given here by the officials allowed Basingstoke the chance to equalise. Rob Gradwell easily converting the spot kick. And soon after they found a winner, could build up play and a neat ball was met in the area by David Pratt, who doubled his tally and sent Basingstoke through to the next round. Gareth Messenger, Winchester News Online. Elsewhere in football, Blue Square South strugglers Eastley slumped to a 4-1 defeat away to League Two side Aldershot Town. The result adds increasing pressure to manager Ian Baird. There was more positive news for AFC Totten, who saw off Cove in a convincing display at the Testwood Stadium. The home side recorded an emphatic 7-2 victory, with summer signing James Coots scoring a hat-trick. And in the Wessex League, Winchester's good form continued at the weekend with a 4-2 win over fifth-place Christchurch. Jamie White on the score sheet twice to make it six goals in three games for the former Southampton striker. Now for ice hockey, and the Slough Jets flew in to face the Basingstoke Bison on Saturday in one of the most open games you'll see this season. Michael Connolly saw this 13-goal thriller. The Basingstoke Bison return to the Planet Ice Arena to face mid-table Slough Jets. They'll be hoping to put some points on the board after losing away at Bracknell last week. And it was a positive start for Basingstoke. Marcel Petran scored early, putting Basingstoke ahead. Petran then doubled the lead a few minutes later. But Connolly managed to get one back for the Jets. Closely followed by Adam Calder, levelling it before the break. And the end-to-end -end hockey continued into the second quarter, Nicky Chin putting the Bison ahead. Adam Calder got himself another to level it for the Jets at 3-all, but then Jacob Heron put the Bison ahead once again, making it 4-3. And Volrad made it 5-3 minutes later, before Petran put a three-goal deficit between the two teams. 
Darius Bliskorkas pulled one back for the Jets before Slough added a fifth. And two minutes into the last quarter, Tom Carlin tied the game at six each. But then Adam Calder put the Jets ahead for the first time in the game, making it 7-6. But with only seven minutes left, Basingstoke came close to levelling the game once again. Volrab's effort was good enough to beat the keeper, but was judged to have been kept off the line. Our replay show it was a very tight call. However, Basingstoke kept pushing, but couldn't find the breakthrough. The Jets hung on to win this eventful match, 7-6. Michael Connolly, Winchester News Online. Well, I have to say that looks like an incredibly chillingly close game there. Uh, <laughs> well, the, uh, the scores were actually frozen at six apiece, Cara, oh. but uh, Slough just with a late winner there. So. Well, there's no way we can continue with these bad jokes, so that's all for your sport. But continuing down the slippery slope, the Antarctic is in the sight of scientists from Southampton after the discovery of a new subterranean lake. Believed to have been submerged for millions of years, the breakthrough is hoped to unearth some new life forms and even clues about climate change. Felicity Houston has this. Antarctica, bleak, desolate and beautiful. But a group of Southampton scientists won't be there for the scenery. They'll be looking for signs of life deep under the ice. The subglacial lakes, of which Lake Owlsworth is an example, um, are, are pristine environments that have been locked away from, from, the, um, from the environment for you know, hundreds of thousands of years. Um, there, there, there is a, a premise that says wherever there's water, there's life. Um, and the scientists on this expedition are, are quite keen to sort of prove or disprove that. Um, nobody's ever sampled these lakes before, so this really is a first. Um, and the hope is, or the expectation I think, is that they will actually find some form of life in these lakes. Um, this is not going to be sea monsters or Loch Ness monsters or whatever. This is going to be microbial stuff. This is going to be bacteria, viruses, that sort of thing. Uh, well, I work in the sensors group here, where we're developing the probe. So it's a team uh, mostly of engineers. Uh, there, there'll be about 10 of us. Mostly we'll be camping uh, in the middle of nowhere on the ice for three months. That's pretty cool. Are going to go ice fishing? Or something like it's a bit deep because the ice is oh, two goodness. miles deep, so I, d I don't think there are any fish anyway. <laughs> it's absolutely surreal, yes, and, and it's an awesome experience. If ever you get the chance to go, please do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really should. No, it's, it's, it's like being on a different planet, quite honestly. Felicity Houston, Winchester News Online, Southampton. Well, that's been all for this week, but for more award-winning news and sport, make sure you log on to www.winnow.co.uk. But from all of us here, goodbye.